Thank you very much for coming to the university. Welcome to the And we got the even really exciting uh, speaker. And um, yeah, we're going to introduce him. Uh, I will do a couple of housekeeping, housekeeping things. Most of you are familiar with this. We've been here before. Um, emergency exits for that you came in by the back. We have emergency exits as well. You have worry about me and myself, and we will make sure that you will be escorted out and we'll get her in front of, in front of the building here. We don't expect any uh, drills, so if we hear the alarm, it's the real thing, but we'll make sure you get out safely. Um, toilets to this week, approximately where you came in. Um, you probably discovered that we are serving refreshments. Some of these refreshments have alcohol in there. And um, let me remind you that the people that are waiting at home want your home safe. So please make sure that you drink responsibly. Um, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Noah. Okay, my slides, right? This is the that I'm doing this. So, um, innovation. What do we do? And um, we like to organize events like this, where we are convinced that we bring people together that um, are like-minded or can share similar stories or provide a different perspective. And what actually happens when these people actually start to talk to each other? So that's. Right. When you start to talk to each other, you're like, hmm, that's interesting. Can I know more? And that's when collaboration starts. And we really, we, we are really sure that when that collaboration starts, then, then the real the real innovation uh, continues and continues thereafter. So we do a lot of these events. So please look at our website if you want to if you want to uh, uh, come to more. Um, we also have a co-working space um, where uh, there are a lot of companies out here, startups that uh, are using our space to grow in uh, the region. Now, introduce Duncan. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. We met a couple of years ago, and uh, you had this um, uh, innovative idea to put a battery in uh, a tractor that originally didn't have battery, well, only the battery to actually start the, 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 the fossil fuel motor that, that, that was in there. And we met because I was thinking circular farm, circular economy, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm really excited mm -hmm. that Duncan will take us on a, on a, on a journey when it comes to, uh, to uh, on farm mobility. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Thanks also to Kay uh, for organizing. Um, it's wonderful. And thank you all for being there. Um, yeah, so as I said, um, I'm Duncan from Lux Innovation, and I'll start out by um, talking a bit about the history of, uh, of the company and where, where it came from. So it originally started uh, about seven years ago. Um, so we uh, bought a lifestyle block uh, for that. Um, and with that comes a lot of grass that it's um, containing. Uh, so I got to uh, get a ride on more, so I did that. Um, but the experience wasn't all that good. Um, it was smelly, noisy, uh, and refueling was, was a pain. Um, so I looked to see if there were any alternatives to uh, petrol engine, um, and it kind of weren't. So I decided to um, try and uh, do something myself. So that's exactly what it is. Um, I found uh, an old cup cadet that had a, a broken engine um, and I swapped it out for electric motor control and batteries. So there's a picture of it uh, had the deck removed, but it's basically um, a new conversion and just programming the controller there. 
So as you can imagine, um, a lawnmower is good for lawns, but not so much for um, bigger grass, not much taller grass, kind of which tends to have a bit more land. So um, I basically repeated the process to see if there's anything um, slightly bigger in terms of tractors, because we wanted to do a bit of cultivation as well. Um, but there really wasn't anything available. So um, I managed to find a note by Seki, 18 horsepower, um, that had uh, thrown the leg out of bed, as they said. So it was a big hole in the engine block, in the diesel. Uh, so I, I, I did the same, I converted it. So it had a twice the battery capacity of the mower. Um, and this is a good friend, uh, Ryan Ramhager. He's a local organic farmer uh, to his basis. So this was about, about six years ago. So since then, it work to it, but we'll get to that soon. Um, so a couple of years ago, um, a good friend of mine joined the company as well, Tony and Tony. So this is uh, Tony and myself. Uh, this is actually a photo shoot for the Genes campaign. They approached us to be part of that campaign. So it's got the, the more and the tractor. So the journey um, in terms of growing it and becoming a startup has been um, quite exciting. <laughs> and so at the time I met uh, when uh, first we were part of the Renovo uh, Orion Energy Accelerator program. Um, so that was that was pretty amazing. So this is a, a photo um, of the team. So it's uh, Ministry of Awesome, Honorable Megan Woods, and Tony myself, as well as uh, Louis Tractor. So this is at ARA. So we, we took the tractor in. Uh, um, we've also had quite a bit of media exposure, so um, we were on the Six Club News, um, which was pretty good, at the moment of the Genes campaign. But as, as a result of that, we actually got in contact with a uh, fossil fuel free cherry orchard down in Cromwell. Uh, it's called Forest Park, the Forest Lodge Orchard. Um, and what they're doing is pretty exciting. Uh, so they contacted us and said they had a need for. Um, a fossil fuel free way of spraying uh, their cherries. Um, so, before I get into that a bit too much, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the benefits of uh, going electric over other vehicles. So, um, similar to road going vehicles, I don't know how many of you have EVs here. There we go. A couple. Um, the upfront cost is a bit more. That is coming down now. That's nearly on parity with, uh, with combustion vehicles, but over the lifetime of the vehicle, the the cost is considerably less. So um, we calculate that over a 15 year lifespan, um, we reduce the cost by about 54 percent. Um, so it takes about six years um, to, um, to break even um, with, with moderate use. So it's more reliable. So um, being electric, there's uh, fewer parts. Um, and so there's you know, a longer interval between uh, service hours. It's still a mechanical vehicle. So there are you know, parts that you can still can retain, but it's, it's quite a bit better. And there's also uh, the obvious benefits of uh, um, reduced fossil fuel emission or CO2 emissions, um, especially here in New Zealand with our renewable grid network. It also um, provides quite a bit of resilience. So um, part of what we're developing is a way of utilizing the tractor in a bidirectional way. So that means you can basically plug in the kind of buildings. It's like vehicle to load or vehicle to grid. Um, so you can use the, the, the tractor as a, as a backup battery and, and run it on the side. It's also much nicer to use. So um, it's a lot quieter. So a few thousand times quieter, which you know can be a lot safer as well because you can hear a lot more uh, what's going on around you. Um, it's also a lot more pleasant to use. Um, and there's no fumes on the explanations. So it's, it's quite, quite nice. Um, and it's also, um, you know, a drop in replacement. So a lot of the existing implements you can you can use as um, as they are. However, there's benefits of, of converting those as well, and I'll touch on that shortly as well. So Forest Lodge approached us, as mentioned, and they basically needed a solution to their existing um, spraying regime. So what they were doing is they, they had um, golf carts with uh, tanks on the back, and they were using that to spray their rows, and that was quite time consuming for them, uh, so they needed something better. So we teamed up with them and a company called FMR of the Marlboro, and they developed an electric spray unit. So 
instead of using the PTO from the back of the tractor, um, it actually plugs into a tree pin socket, a 10 amp plug, I can take it from my pocket, um, and it uses the power delivery from uh, this inverter, the bi-direct inverter on the tractor to actually power the sprayer. So it powers the, there's um, the spray pump and there's an agitator pump as well. So as a result of that, um, we have a roughly five times increase in efficiency. So we're using um, our call the 18 horse power of the tractor um, in place of what would have been uh, at 45 or power plus um, uh, equipment. So I've got, uh, let's see if this works. So this is an example of the um, prayer and operation. So this is um, when we're testing it, just to make sure it works fine. So most of the noise you hear is actually the hydrostatic mm -hmm. So I guess that is just a bit of an overview of all you know, a session with a full tank. And so it just shows how much energy so that's another uh, one of the nice things about that is you get a lot of telemetry um, from the system. So at peak power use, um, when the tank is full, it was growing just under 8 kilowatts. Um, and then as the tank enters, um, it goes to about 6.2 kilowatts. So it's a considerable difference, especially at the start. So most of that energy is from the towing. Um, the actual spray unit uses about one and a half kilowatts continuous. So there's also um, other benefits of, of um, being able to, to plug anything into the back. So as an example, they, um, they're also able to use an electric chipper um, as, as part of their workflow. So as mentioned, um, the, the old way that they used to spray, it used to take 30 stops to do the entire orchard, and now it just takes two. So here's another benefit of that. <laughs> so in terms of um, savings, uh, both monetary and, and CO2 emissions, um, over the last eight months, we've used about 858 kilowatt hours um, in the tractor. So that's over about, about 255 and a half hours. Um, we calculate that it saved about 2.6 tons of CO2 and uh, saved them about uh, $2,200. So, as mentioned, the vehicle to grid is, is a large part of what we're exploring um, and, and looking at. So, um, we're developing a software algorithm um, in conjunction with, with the, the tractor itself to be able to look at various different aspects of. of um, of the algorithm. So, um, you know, taking the regional load into account, taking the historical load into account, and then uh, creating an algorithm to, to make sure that the tractor is charged when needed, but also will be able to provide a good service um, both locally and regionally. So, one of the things um, that makes this quite beneficial, especially for New Zealand, is the um, inverse correlation between uh, peak loading and uh, vehicle utilization. As, as we point to the vehicle. So generally in New Zealand, uh, loading occurs in, in winter. It's pretty cold uh, winter mornings and evenings. Uh, everyone gets up, turns everything on at home, and then goes into work and does the same. So generally that's when practice on being utilized quite as much as um, as in the spring of uh, some of the water. So we think that you know that, that can provide quite a lot of benefit. Another aspect of this is uh, it can provide services for the, the, the grid in far flung places. So if you're at the end of a very long line, the voltage on the grid um, is, is quite a challenge to maintain that uh, stability. So if you've got um, you know, dozens of tractors that are able to boost that voltage and, and help um, boost the supply, then that can also solve the problem for the grid. So I'll talk a little bit about other electric uh, vehicles um, on farm and, and how they can So 
Um, I think Mike Casey is giving the next talk, so he'll probably talk a bit more in detail on, on what they're doing. But as an example, uh, this is um, these are two vehicles that they're using quite extensively on the cherry orchard. Um, so there are two golf carts that have been modified. So the uh, suspension has been improved and they've got upward tires. Um, one of them has also got a solar panel roof. Um, so that basically can be charged all day, which is pretty amazing. Um, so uh, the other one's got an upgraded uh, battery back on the system. Um, other vehicles as well. So there's uh, the upload bike. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with if you like it. Uh, doing some good work. Um, and then in terms of use, which is always a big question, um, there's not currently too much available, especially for the four or four wheel drive. Um, but I think that that will change um, quite rapidly in the next uh, next couple of years. So what's next for us? Um, we are looking to do a larger tractor conversion. So we're looking at about a 50 60 horsepower equivalent. Um, we're also looking at a ground up design. So, one of the advantages of ground up designs is you're not dealing with the legacy uh, framework of the existing tractors in terms of the engine needs to be up front. And then you've got all this transmission to deal with, with you know, the current losses uh, under that. So, a ground up design means that you can put in more battery, but you also have longer run time for your. Uh, on top of that, we're also uh, continuing the development of the, the power flow control so that they can the cars with what we're going. And we're also looking for partnerships um, to help build out these platforms. But yeah, um, that concludes my presentation. So thank you very much for joining us. And, and yeah, we appreciate the opportunity. Go ahead. The importance of factory cars, and you see them, isn't there a big opportunity to, to upscale this and, and um, have a commercial production of, of electric vehicles? Right. I think there is, um, and I'd love to see that. Definitely. I think there, there are quite a lot of challenges um, with manufacturing New Zealand, but um, you know, in terms of value, I think you know, if you go to the high tech route, then I think we can, yeah, definitely. You know, there's a lot of innovation that we can. It's already good power for users 4x4s. Yeah, yeah, the ACD. Yeah. And it just seems like the next, that's the next step. Yeah. I agree. Hi there. I'm Jo Buttoner from Toy to Enviro Care. I was talking to a 17 year old today who likes to play <laughs> automotive and many cooler wheels. And he actually asked me the question, how can I learn? Where do I go to learn how to do electric vehicle stuff? Yes, that's a very good question. And I'm pretty much self-taught, so this just really interested me. Um, so, you know, there, there was nothing, nothing online at the time. Um, or rather, everything that I learned was online. There was nothing, you know, available in terms of courses or or, or other people locally doing it. Um, I think that um, places like Ara, um, I, I think that they do have programs. I'm not sure if there's specifically electric vehicle programs, um, but they do have um, programs where um, they, they do teach students to to be able to service and work on these. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I would maybe suggest is. Um, Having a look at maybe doing the conversion or, or look at, um, you know, there's a pretty good EV uh, community in, in Christchurch. Um, so if he joins that, I think it would be a, a good okay. first step. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> My son was exactly like the boy you're talking to. Um, and he, he came to Ara. And so Ara doesn't do an EV course yet, but there is. Um, Basically, you do a normal car apprentice, a chemical kind of apprenticeship that was built at level four. You can also do high electrician, and then at level five, which is like the four years of normal uh, traditional day course, then you can do a yeah, EV course. It's one year. And in terms of apprenticeships, there are not many around in the EV space. But uh, maybe we talk afterwards in my video. Okay, great. Thank you. I, I think the University of Canterbury, the Epicenter, has um, potentially got some 
um, some good resources as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I can have a chat to you. Well, just to add to that, um, yeah. we don't have specific EV courses, but we have an electrical and computer engineering degree, and we've had students um, go for their final year project, um, something a little bit similar to what Duncan's been doing and looking at farm vehicles and electrifying. Yeah. So specializing at that point. Um, do they also um, sponsor or work with eVelocity? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So eVelocity is a, um, an annual event, I guess, where um, electric vehicles are showcased. And they also showcase student projects. Right. Um, so that, that's another thing. There's also power electronics, and um, in the course, they um, design the electronics to run a go karts and they have small power. Yes, um, he actually <laughs> wants to work on a combine house. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a project. Is there any competition to your work? Yes. There, it, it, yeah. There are, yeah. So, so, so there are a couple of electric tractors coming up. Um, I think one of the most exciting ones, or more exciting ones, is, um, is Monarch um, in the States. So they've um, They've developed an electric tractor and their solar driver is optional. Um, so they've been a lot of automation. Um, so far as larger, actually, they'll be the first uh, New Zealand importer of the monarch. So um, if you guys can make this, um, the next talk, I think um, you'll really enjoy it because Mike will probably talk about that a bit. So, yeah. So you also just uh, conversion? At the moment, it's conversion, but we're looking to do a kind of design. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, in your tractor you device, uh, what's the weight of your tractor compared to the diesel tractor? Because the weight uh, is a challenge for you are putting yes. the equipment. And the question is whether to actually how long did it take to charge the battery and how long the battery can go? Yeah. Yeah, good question. So the weight is it's a little bit heavier, maybe maybe about 40 kg more, 40, 50 kg. It's heavier than that, yeah, than the equivalent. Um, and that's since we've upgraded to 20 kilowatt hour battery. Um it gives a recharge um with a uh, a rapid charge. So they um parts like also it's like a DC charging system. Um so that then takes the charge time to about the same as, as it takes to, to fill the tank. Um which is about um, one and a half to two hours. Okay. So, so that's their charge regime. So, so they, um, the way that it's it's kind of run is you kind of do it in conjunction with another operation. So while the tractor's sitting there and doing something else, they can also be charging. And how do you run the PTO track and PTO track? Yeah, so they don't run the PTO at the moment, um, but the PTO is still available um, to be run as, as so it still goes through the, the old the transmission, basically. Um, in your car, uh, carbon calculations, I noticed you had um, solar panels on the roof in the photograph. Yeah. Are you assuming on-site solar or new no. renewable generation no. or main grid generation? No, so, so those figures, that the savings were based on uh, main main mains generation and even at that it was a fixed price so it's not using spot pricing so it's only yeah. 20 cents per kilowatt hour and the, the diesel calculation um it was two and a half dollars per per year i know it's a bit less now but yeah. over the, the eight months that's that's what we took yeah. so the figures could be a bit better but we don't want to override them yeah, yeah. and you were you assuming a five times efficiency improvement <laughs> And we discussed an email that yeah. up to eight. But... Yeah, yeah, it can be updated. So, so there's a number of different factors. And um, one is it's the, the stock efficiency of um, combustion versus electric. So it's like 30% for combustion versus 80 to 90 percent for electric. And the other is um, you know the first force multiplier of being able to um, improve the efficiency of the implements themselves. So instead of using the PTO, um, you know, use electric motors on the implements. So, you know, we're, we're able to run a sprayer, which is only using one and a half kilowatts, which is about two horsepower, 
you know, uh, most of the energy is going into tunneling at that stage. So being able to, to run it off 10 kilowatts versus 35 kilowatts is, is, is quite huge. <coughs> So how scalable is that? So you can go 60 horsepower, like when we see 300, like, yeah, yeah. does that um, doable? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, so John Deere are looking at, at the larger tractors, so like 200 horsepower plus. Um, the challenge with that, it becomes runtime. So it's, it's not power delivery, but it's the availability to you know, do 100 acres of power and that. Um, yeah. And they're looking at it, they're, they're coming at it slightly different. Um, you know, if you're able to have, uh, Three four hundred liter diesel tank equivalent, you need a massive battery, and that weighs quite a lot as well. So their approach to it seems to be to have a separate battery unit and then to tether the tractor to that. So um, you know, I think they're looking at a megawatt hour battery pack, which has got like a detachable cab at the front, and then you've got like a spool which um, the, the tractor basically plugs into. So um, there are definitely challenges with going bigger. But I think a lot of that can be overcome with automation. So you don't need quite as big a tractor, but you could have more smaller tractors. But you know, then you do also get the challenge of it's very time critical to some of these operations. So a bit of balance. Yeah. Uh, are there other energy efficiencies that tractors getting picked up now that could be incorporated into EV treatment? Um, I think automation will lead to a lot of efficiency. So, um, you know, and it's not necessarily EV specific, but it seems to be, um, it seems to mesh a bit better, in my opinion, with, with EVs. Um, you know, as an example, is, is being able to um, go down a row and identify where you need to spray or what deficiencies are in, in you know, what part of the orchard, and then just spot spray on that part. So, you're only really applying energy. Way you need it. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, is electric the only solution for sustainable farmability? Um, I think for larger scales, uh, hydrogen does play a role, but there's um, I might be biased, but mm -hmm. I think it is, <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's caveats to that. You know, um, there's a lot of complexity. There's also ground trip efficiency. So, you know, you're using electricity to create the hydrogen, and then you also need to be able to store and deliver it instead of just putting the electricity directly into the battery. Where you're just, um, but, you know, like I'm getting what Mar said, for the bigger tractors, um, there are challenges in terms of burn time and the energy density that you have. So, but that could be compensated by us, the human factor, changing our behavior. It could be, exactly. And, and I think that that's a very important point. And, um, you know, we're, we're very set in our ways and we don't generally like to change. But I think um, if there's enough incentive to work slightly differently, and around the new technology, then I think there could be quite a lot of benefits to that. I had the pleasure of talking to the development manager of Tom Deere about electric tractors. And one of the feedbacks that he gets from his larger tractors to the runtime of four, four and a half hours. Well, how do you expect me to actually use that in my farming operation? Because at the moment I can run 24 7. And, and, and then his reply was, well, how? Good is that for the, the well being of the driver? Mm -hmm. yeah. Working 24 working 7. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's basically articulating those, those changes required. Yeah. Exactly. Any more questions that you suggest? Okay, thank you so much. Um, we're going to have a little bit more to eat and to drink in, 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 in a moment's time. So there will be plenty of time to actually talk to Duncan as well and perhaps even partner up with him because I think he's looking for partners. So, so definitely, definitely do that. Um, if you liked this discussion, there is more, there is, there is more to come. And um, Duncan already said that uh, we're talking about um, uh, farm diversification for climate change. 
and we have one of the speakers there is uh, is, is, is my case. So you are very you are very welcome there. Um, we have the climate commission uh, come to uh, Lincoln University uh, on uh, the thirty first of May. Again, you are very welcome to join us. Um, we have the economic uh, development and also economic development unit here on campus, and Caroline Saunders will be uh, will be talking to us uh, on the 13th of June, and then we are going to talk about property as well and property prices and what the property market is actually doing in one of our excellent series. So definitely check out our website and just click on the events and you will see all the dates and all the descriptions. Um, Thank you so much, Duncan, for, 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 for being here. And please join us for um, a little bit of Thank you so much.